Uh, my name is Peter Sarmachuk. I'm the owner of Treadwell's Music Center for the past 40 years. And the uh, store has a much longer history than that, but I've had it for the past 40. Well, the, the store dates back. Uh, we don't know exactly when it started. There was a Vancouver store came into Winnipeg in the 30s, and they bought up an existing store, who I'm not sure what the name of the, uh, who that was, what the name of that store was. But the store they established in Winnipeg was part of their Canada-wide chain called uh, Western Music. And uh, Tom and Sadie Treadwell uh, were the managers of Western Music. So although the Treadwells were active in music in Winnipeg, managing the major music store here through that couple of decades, when they took it over in 56, they changed the name to Treadwells. So the name on the store has been there since 1956. Originally, the store was involved in instrument sales and phonograph record sales back in the 30s, 40s, 50s. But once the Treadwells took over in the mid-50s, they got out of everything except the print music and concentrated on that. And my family bought it in 75, so we've had it, had it for the past 40 years. It's been um, a decision looming and in the making for, for a few years now. The uh, demise of the print music industry has been uh, certainly... A photocopying was the start of it back in the 50s and 60s, but then the internet downloading has been the real catalyst for uh, fast moving. Uh, we, we may be the last store of our kind in Canada, last retailer of print music that exists just on uh, print music. There are, of course, Winnipeg still has a lot of good music stores that carry print music, but their focus mainly is instruments and uh, sheet music and books. It's just a sidelight. We do have a presence online. We have a website. Uh, the website is dedicated to out-of-print music, so it's a very unique site. Uh, there's, we've been told by people in various parts of the world that they can't find anything like what we have because we research the items that we put on our site, and it's strictly music that is virtually unavailable anywhere else. So, so that's, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a booming business right now, but it's steadily growing, and it's going to be, become a hobby for me in my retirement. There has been a change culturally, not so much in Winnipeg, but, but worldwide. And I don't know if you could call it a cultural change, but one of the biggest changes in music in general for instruments and performing artists and everything is the decline, the demise of the recording business. Uh, what used to be a multi-billion dollar industry, the sale of first phonograph records and then uh, CDs is has disappeared and that's billions of dollars out of the music economy so that that affects everybody so it's a it, it's a it's there's not much said about it in the news which is surprising but it really does have an impact throughout the industry with the with the growth of the city and with the change in the uh, the ethnic uh, immigration to Winnipeg with different the Filipino community is an extremely musical community uh, the oriental community is an extremely musical community so it's really been vibrant for the uh, local cultural scene having the, these an immigrant uh, uh, the influx of people from all over the world and uh, certainly um, Eastern Europeans uh, are extremely musical and, and uh, that that wave of immigration was probably the turn of the century the 19th into the 20th and through the 20s 30s 40s 50s but with the change of immigration we've seen in recent years for the music scene in Winnipeg, it's been a great thing, an excellent thing. The, the last major store in New York, in downtown Manhattan, uh, went out of business about a year ago this time. So even a major city like New York can't support a store such as this. So the, the writing has been on, a wall, on the wall for a little while. Yeah. We've pioneered quite a few things in, in the country. We were the first music store in Canada to offer toll-free phone service back in the early 80s, you know, before toll-free was really even a, a known thing, and, and various other things that we've, we've pioneered over time. But, uh, but that's, that's all history now. <laughs> it's good news, bad news. Uh, it, it's a decision I had to make, but I'll certainly miss the, you know, friends and, uh, and customers that have frequented the doors over the years. Lots of customers are, I consider friends, and I hope that the feeling is, is mutual. So, you know, we, when you're in business for 40 years and you've been dealing with some of the people for that length of time, naturally it's a little bit more than just a, you know, a, a customer, a clerk relationship.